So you're working at both extremes of, of, of human comprehension from the very smallest and a fraction of a fraction of a, 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 of a millimeter down to the part of, yeah. subatomic particles to the vastness of, of, of the universe in, in, its, in its scope of looking back 13.7 billion light years. That's right, that's right. And what's crazy about that is that it's absolute madness, yeah. right? I mean, you know, it makes my head spin, and that's why I like it so much. <laughs> it's all natural. Yeah, um, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. It, it, it makes your head spin and is more exciting and, and, and invigorating than any drug that anybody can take, because this is the ultimate drug. This You're is. dealing with ultimate reality on both scales. My neurotransmitters really like, you know, <laughs> these types of thoughts. Yeah, um, I mean that—that that is just that's that's really so exciting. And that's the unity. It used to be that you could talk theoretically about this stuff, and each one you could do observational astronomy, and you could do some theoretical physics. But the, the, the bringing the two together was just just a matter of a fairy tale. But in the last few decades, it's become real science. That's what's crazy about it is that it's actually are kind of real. Yeah, that the fact that. I can actually do a calculation um, based on, say, take Einstein's theory of general relativity. You do a little calculation here. You take, you know, our standard model of particle physics, which is a quantum field theory. You blend them together in this nice way, like a nice brew, <laughs> and then you spit out a curve, uh -huh. and then you compare it to some satellite data, um, and you find this striking agreement. Yeah, it's kind of wild. That's unbelievable. So it used to be where, yeah, you could do some lots of work at the very small, and you could do observational astronomy, but but nobody was working comparing the two. It, they just were radically different fields. But suddenly it seems that you can't really do either one at the state of the art without bringing them together. Yes, because the thing that's interesting is that they both point or they both need one another, as you just um, said there. Um, the, you find that there are anomalies, inconsistencies in the astrophysical domain. Yeah. And you find that there are anomalies and inconsistency. My job is that I pay attention to where things go wrong. I'm like, you know, I'm like the, I, the doctor here, the good doctor. <laughs> you know, I find, I do a diagnosis and I say, okay, here's a prognosis. Yeah. You need to bring these two things together. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it's going to be painful. <laughs> but... Um, you bring them together and you find lock, you know, sort of like a lock and key. So, so when you're the, lucky, things come together. If you have problems in two areas that can't be solved within its area itself, yes. the only way to solve the problem is to bring them together so that you can express the problem that you find in cosmology by a solution that you have in particle physics and vice versa. That's exactly correct. I mean, inflation is a perfect example of that. Yeah. For example, how inflation resolved this horizon problem that was observed by astrophysicists, um, and then it required a concept in subatomic particle physics yeah. to resolve that problem. Yeah, I mean, that, um, that, that is just amazing. Yeah. How, how do you see... The, Alan's a genius. <laughs> how, how do you see... That's Alan goes. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you see the future uh, of particle cosmology evolving? Ooh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's actually... Um, what, what, I'm, what I'm here for. Um, I see the future continuing to evolve in the realm of quantum gravity and also in the realm of particle physics. We have been probing and in the future will probe um, the, continue to probe the, the um, other particles that are predicted by the standard model. Right. Um, you know, one particle that actually endows um, substance with mass. Basically, all the substance that we know of um, would like to travel at the speed of light, but there's something that slows them down and gives it mass. Mm. And this thing is called the Higgs particle. And we um, would very much like to find this particle. Now, this Higgs particle exists you know, on, in Neptune. Yeah. It exists on the sun. It's everywhere. It's given mass to everything everywhere. So that means the Higgs is not only just something here in the here and now and very tiny subatomic 
but it's also a cosmological thing. We, we also call it a field, like the electromagnetic field. Mm. So it's everywhere. So how do you reconcile these two things? I think a big part of the future of particle cosmology um, rests in the, the mystery of, of, of the Higgs being both a cosmological entity and a subatomic entity and how to reconcile those two things. So how then, uh, as a, a young, young man from the Bronx uh, who uh, was going into music and, uh, and uh, looking at insects, uh, now you find yourself dealing with the most fundamental aspects of the universe on its, both its micro and macro scale. When you look back at your life, what do you think? I think that I was very lucky. I mean, I really look back with um, great fortune that I've had um, great teachers, um, people that have, you know, basically dedicated um, a huge part of their lives um, in service to people like myself, um, you know, young people like myself. Um, they have a tremendously hard job, and I feel fortunate and grateful to, to, um, to them. Um, and also that there is this, you know, sort of human quest. I mean, there's a community of, 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 of people, um, both the community of physicists itself and, and, and the public and, and, you know, and people who support us um, in this quest mm. and to, to, dis, to discover things. You know, it, a, big, a big part of what fascinates me and what, what, what I love doing so much is not necessarily, oh, that I know the answer, but it's actually the discovery process. Mm. Um, and knowing what a problem is, not necessarily solving the problem, really, but just saying, oh, this is, here, here is something that we don't know. And so I, I just look back with, like, you know, great fortune. Um, and I've had a lot of fun, um, you know, learning all this stuff. 